the Bible, and the Catechism, in a year. Day 225 From the first book of Maccabees Mattathias and his sons In those days Mattathias the son of John, son of Simeon, a priest of the sons of Jorab, moved from Jerusalem and settled in Modin. He had five sons, John surnamed Gadi, Simon called Thassi, Judas called Maccabeus, Eliezer called Avaron, and Jonathan called Aphis. He saw the blasphemies being committed in Judah and Jerusalem, and said, Alas! Why was I born to see this? The ruin of my people, the ruin of the holy city and to dwell there when it was given over to the enemy. The sanctuary given over to aliens? Her temple has become like a man without honor. Her glorious vessels have been carried into captivity. Her babes have been killed in her streets. Her youths by the sword of the foe. What nation has not inherited her palaces? And has not seized her spoils? All her adornment has been taken away. No longer free, she has become a slave. And behold, our holy place, our beauty. And our glory have been laid waste. The Gentiles have profaned it. Why should we live any longer? And Mattathias and his sons rent their clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned greatly. Pagan worship refused. Then the king's officers who were enforcing the apostasy came to the city of Modin to make them offer sacrifice. Many from Israel came to them, and Mattathias and his sons were assembled. Then the king's officers spoke to Mattathias as follows, You are a leader, honored and great in this city, and supported by sons and brothers. Now be the first to come and do what the king commands, as all the Gentiles and the men of Judah and those that are left in Jerusalem have done. Then you and your sons will be numbered among the friends of the king, and you and your sons will be honored with silver and gold and many gifts. But Mattathias answered and said in a loud voice, Even if all the nations that live under the rule of the king obey him, and have chosen to do his commandments, departing each one from the religion of his fathers, yet I and my sons and my brothers will live by the covenant of our fathers. Far be it from us to desert the law and the ordinances. We will not obey the king's words by turning aside from our religion to the right hand or to the left. When he had finished speaking these words, a Jew came forward in the sight of all to offer sacrifice upon the altar in Modin, according to the king's command. When Mattathias saw it, be burned with zeal and his heart was stirred. He gave vent to righteous anger, he ran and killed him upon the altar. At the same time he killed the king's officer who was forcing them to sacrifice, and he tore down the altar. Thus he burned with zeal for the law, as Phineas did against Zimri the son of Salu. Then Mattathias cried out in the city with a loud voice, saying, Let every one who is zealous for the law and supports the covenant come out with me. And he and his sons fled to the hills and left all that they had in the city. Then many who were seeking righteousness and justice went down to the wilderness to dwell there, they, their sons, their wives, and their cattle, because evils pressed heavily upon them. And it was reported to the king's officers, and to the troops in Jerusalem the city of David, that men who had rejected the king's command had gone down to the hiding places in the wilderness. Many pursued them, and overtook them, they encamped opposite them and prepared for battle against them on the Sabbath day. And they said to them, Enough of this. Come out and do what the king commands, and you will live. But they said, We will not come out, nor will we do what the king commands and so profane the Sabbath day. Then the enemy hastened to attack them. But they did not answer them or hurl a stone at them or block up their hiding places, for they said, Let us all die in our innocence, heaven and earth testify for us that you are killing us unjustly. So they attacked them on the Sabbath, and they died, with their wives and children and cattle, to the number of a thousand persons. When Mattathias and his friends learned of it, they mourned for them deeply. And each said to his neighbor, if we all do as our brethren have done and refuse to fight with the Gentiles for our lives and for our ordinances, they will quickly destroy us from the earth. So they made this decision that day, let us fight against every man who comes to attack us on the Sabbath day, let us not all die as our brethren died in their hiding places. 
Counterattack. Then there united with them a company of Hasideans, mighty warriors of Israel, every one who offered himself willingly for the law. And all who became fugitives to escape their troubles joined them and reinforced them. They organized an army, and struck down sinners in their anger and lawless men in their wrath. The survivors fled to the Gentiles for safety, and Mattathias and his friends went about and tore down the altars, they forcibly circumcised all the uncircumcised boys that they found within the borders of Israel. They hunted down the arrogant men, and the work prospered in their hands. They rescued the law out of the hands of the Gentiles and kings, and they never let the sinner gain the upper hand. The Last Words of Mattathias Now the days drew near for Mattathias to die, and he said to his sons, Arrogance and reproach have now become strong, it is a time of ruin and furious anger. Now, my children, show zeal for the law, and give your lives for the covenant of our fathers. Remember the deeds of the fathers, which they did in their generations, and receive great honor and an everlasting name. Was not Abraham found faithful when tested, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness? Joseph in the time of his distress kept the commandment, and became lord of Egypt. Phineas our father, because he was deeply zealous, received the covenant of everlasting priesthood. Joshua, because he fulfilled the command, became a judge in Israel. Caleb, because he testified in the assembly, received an inheritance in the land. David, because he was merciful, inherited the throne of the kingdom forever. Elijah because of great zeal for the law was taken up into heaven. Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael believed and were saved from the flame. Daniel because of his innocence was delivered from the mouth of the lions. And so observe, from generation to generation, that none who put their trust in him will lack strength. Do not fear the words of a sinner, for his splendor will turn into dung and worms. Today he will be exalted, but tomorrow he will not be found, because he has returned to the dust, and his plans will perish. My children, be courageous and grow strong in the law, for by it you will gain honor. Now behold, I know that Simeon your brother is wise in counsel, always listen to him, he shall be your father. Judas Maccabeus has been a mighty warrior from his youth, he shall command the army for you and fight the battle against the peoples. You shall rally about you all who observe the law, and avenge the wrong done to your people. Pay back the Gentiles in full, and heed what the law commands. Then he blessed them, and was gathered to his fathers. He died in the 146th year and was buried in the tomb of his fathers at Modin. And all Israel mourned for him with great lamentation. From the Book of Ecclesiastes Take life as it comes. But all this I laid to heart, examining it all, how the righteous and the wise and their deeds are in the hand of God, whether it is love or hate man does not know. Everything before them is vanity, since one fate comes to all, to the righteous and the wicked, to the good and the evil, to the clean and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice. As is the good man, so is the sinner, and he who swears is as he who shuns an oath. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that one fate comes to all, also the hearts of men are full of evil, and madness is in their hearts while they live, and after that they go to the dead. But he who is joined with all the living has hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, but the memory of them is lost. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and they have no more for ever any share in all that is done under the sun. Go, eat your bread with enjoyment, and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved what you do. Let your garments be always white, let not oil be lacking on your head. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love, all the days of your vain life which he has given you under the sun, because that is your portion in life and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol, to which you are going. Again I saw that under the sun the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to the men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. For man does not know his time. Like fish which are taken in an evil net, and like birds which are caught in a snare, so the sons of men are snared at an evil time, when it suddenly falls upon them. 
wisdom superior to folly. I have also seen this example of wisdom under the sun, and it seemed great to me. There was a little city with few men in it, and a great king came against it and besieged it, building great siege works against it. But there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that poor man. But I say that wisdom is better than might, though the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heeded. The words of the wise heard in quiet are better than the shouting of a ruler among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. From the Gospel of Luke The Temptation of Jesus And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, and was led by the Spirit for forty days in the wilderness, tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing in those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you, then, will worship me, it shall all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written. You shall worship the Lord your God. And him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written. He will give his angels charge of you, to guard you. And on their hands they will bear you up. Lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Beginning of the Galilean Ministry And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and a report concerning him went out through all the surrounding country. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. The Rejection of Jesus at Nazareth And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he went to the synagogue, as his custom was, on the Sabbath day. And he stood up to read, and there was given to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. He opened the book and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and gave it back to the attendant, and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself, what we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here also in your own country. And he said, Truly, I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his own country. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when there came a great famine over all the land, and Elijah was sent to none of them but only to Zarephath, in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. And they rose up and put him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down headlong. But passing through the midst of them he went away. From the Catechism In brief St. Paul said to his disciple Timothy, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands, and if any one aspires to the office of bishop, he desires a noble task. To Titus he said, 
This is why I left you in Crete, that you amend what was defective, and appoint presbyters in every town, as I directed you. The whole church is a priestly people. Through baptism all the faithful share in the priesthood of Christ. This participation is called the common priesthood of the faithful. Based on this common priesthood and ordered to its service, there exists another participation in the mission of Christ, the ministry conferred by the sacrament of holy orders, where the task is to serve in the name and in the person of Christ the head in the midst of the community. The ministerial priesthood differs in essence from the common priesthood of the faithful because it confers a sacred power for the service of the faithful. The ordained ministers exercise their service for the people of God by teaching, munis docendi, divine worship, munis liturgicum, and pastoral governance, munis regendi. Since the beginning, the ordained ministry has been conferred and exercised in three degrees, that of bishops, that of presbyters, and that of deacons. The ministries conferred by ordination are irreplaceable for the organic structure of the church, without the bishop, presbyters, and deacons, one cannot speak of the church. The bishop receives the fullness of the sacrament of holy orders, which integrates him into the episcopal college and makes him the visible head of the particular church entrusted to him. As successors of the apostles and members of the college, the bishops share in the apostolic responsibility and mission of the whole church under the authority of the Pope, successor of St. Peter. Priests are united with the bishops in sacerdotal dignity and at the same time depend on them in the exercise of their pastoral functions. They are called to be the bishop's prudent co-workers. They form around their bishop the presbyterium which bears responsibility with him for the particular church. They receive from the bishop the charge of a parish community or a determinate ecclesial office. Deacons are ministers ordained for tasks of service of the church, they do not receive the ministerial priesthood, but ordination confers on them important functions in the ministry of the word, divine worship, pastoral governance, and the service of charity, tasks which they must carry out under the pastoral authority of their bishop. The sacrament of holy orders is conferred by the laying on of hands followed by a solemn prayer of consecration asking God to grant the ordinan the graces of the Holy Spirit required for his ministry. Ordination imprints an indelible sacramental character. The Church confers the sacrament of holy orders only on baptized men, viri, whose suitability for the exercise of the ministry has been duly recognized. Church authority alone has the responsibility and right to call someone to receive the sacrament of holy orders. In the Latin Church the sacrament of holy orders for the presbyterate is normally conferred only on candidates who are ready to embrace celibacy freely and who publicly manifest their intention of staying celibate for the love of God's kingdom and the service of men. It is bishops who confer the sacrament of holy orders in the three degrees.